Hello everyone, Dr. Beard here. I hope you had a wonderful week and a fantastic weekend. You guys have been doing a great job thinking about how we can leverage educational technology for the purpose of engaging our learners so that we can achieve a transfer of understanding. So that we are thinking about using technology for the learning outcome versus just for the sake of technology. And as we are doing that, there can certainly come a time where you might need to recommend a particular software or maybe even the hardware that would be necessary to utilize the software. So as a leader of technology, you need to be prepared to do the evaluation and then make the recommendations. So this week in module 11, we're gonna look at evaluating hardware some of the major factors that we may consider are performance, compatibility, you know, the, the modularity, expandability, ergonomics, software availability, vendor support is important, and certainly cost, accessibility, all those things that, that play into the hardware side, and then the software side we've been looking more at, but there's major factors we need to consider, the efficiency of use, do we have good documentation? Do we know what the hardware requirements are, which may then lead back to suggesting a particular hardware that's needed? And again, vendor and cost. Many times we have free apps and uh, software that's available, but often there's a cost to be able to do what we really need to do with it. So you need to be able to make a good case or make a good argument for software or hardware that's needed. So by the end, at the end of this module, the learning objective is for you to examine those major criteria that are used in evaluating hardware and software, and then complete an evaluation of hardware or software so that you can make that recommendation. So I'm working on the lecture right now. I wanted to point out this uh, visual. You will see it in the readings, probably a better quality. I tried to resize this a couple times. But I thought it was a really good model, and you guys have expressed you've liked some of these models that we found as we consider technology and learning. The readings this week, as has been the case, should get you started thinking about these things. I like this model as well. Looks really good for you to think through when you're making that media selection. Obviously, students and the student need is first, and then we work through those other areas. So read these, uh, really good content. Hopefully it'll get you thinking. You guys have been finding some great resources, so continue to do that. For the discussion, we're gonna build upon really last week's discussion, and, and we'll get into the software, hardware application and, and evaluation in the actual assignment. But I wanted you to pause here and think about, it. you guys were looking at uh, virtual learning or distance learning, online learning, in the discussion last week. So for this one, I want you to think about all that's happened in K-12 online learning over the last, um, well, year especially. You know, you guys looked last week at some of the programs that were out there, but I'm thinking with this discussion question, what's happened where teachers have been put in a position where they've got to rapidly move to an online option? And in many cases, they haven't been prepared. You guys spoke in the discussion about the need for training and developing educators to be able to utilize certain technologies. And in some cases, teachers were pushed to use that as an option and, and really struggled, to put it mildly. So thinking back over the last year, especially driven by COVID-19, where K-12 schools and universities were suddenly required to go online, there were a lot of lessons learned. And some of them you were privy to or maybe directly hands-on involved. So share your thoughts on how you would now, or maybe you learned from doing and have already done, how would you lead teachers through transitioning to online learning? So consider the following questions. You don't have to answer all of these questions, but Thinking about in general, just how would you lead teachers, administrators, students, parents through switching to online classes? So look at these example questions, thinking about advice you would give teachers that maybe you're teaching online for the first time, 
What are some factors that teachers, administrators, etc., would need to consider? Are there certain factors that are more important than others? So I'll let you think through that. Are there certain conditions that impact these factors? We've been looking at all this, but sort of a, a time to kind of think through a current situation. And then how can we be, be, be better prepared moving forward to go online? And, and one outcome that has already been obvious, now we may be better prepared for snow days or when there's illnesses that aren't necessarily from a pandemic, but in the past certain schools may have a certain outbreak of flu or maybe even strep or some other type of illness where they decided they would shut down for a week and sanitize everything and allow everyone to heal up a little bit. You know, are we better prepared now to be able to, to switch to uh, an online or distance learning option? So the assignment, this is one that I think is, is a fun one and, and really good to prepare your thinking moving forward. You've been considering all of these different educational technology options. So let's look at evaluating hardware and software. And there's, a, there's important factors. You need to get the right match to make sure that there's a su successful application. If you don't have the right compatibility, there's more frustration than success because it's not working properly. Maybe there's a delay if you have bandwidth or streaming issues, as you guys have, I'm sure have experienced at some point. You know, and, and you're trying to use a particular application and there's a delay or it's dragging, you know, you're not able to get the learning outcome. So in module six, you identified some policies and procedures of, particu of a particular school or school district regarding their educational technology. So you can go back and look at that or personal experience and and then you may have learned through uh, evaluating their schools or school districts that there is typically a person with the primary or persons that are uh, tasked with the primary responsibility of making purchasing decisions. But again, as a leader, we can lead from any position, you have a chance to influence that decision. So you need to be able to make a recommendation. Can you evaluate hardware software well enough to make that recommendation or make a case for it. So considering the factors, uh, I want you to review a software product and make a recommendation. You can also look at a hardware application. There's a little more to that, but that's fine. You can do either or, but I want you to think about these two things. So again, revisit module six. I think that would be a good place to start and look at that school or school district and the planning processes and policies that are involved and then think about that and then be prepared to review a software product and make a suggestion for purchasing the software and so part two select the software product for instructional purposes uh, purposes and review it using software evaluation features identified uh, I have in the textbook, uh, we're not using that textbook this time. So find something that's related and uh, you can use the student examples that I provide right here below, or you can go online and find something similar. There are already developed templates that you can use and I'm open to any way you wanna do this. I just want you to follow the, the basic fundamentals that will get you there. I also uh, put a link in that you can open in Canvas that helps you just think through selecting technology for learning. So these are just some of the things we want to think about. But you'll see from Matt, his example, he pulled an existing form that he had used before uh, in his school. And something like this is great because you can go through there and just select some of the variables that you'd want to think about and he had kind of a Likert scale evaluation and then the overall uh, recommendation and then you're going to have the overall recommendation at the bottom once you've selected some of those other pieces and then you'll see Jen had a little different take on it I like this one too you see it looks totally different but got to the same place 
So here's the name of the software and the vendor. Here's what subject it would be applied to, grade level, if there's any cost information, if you can find out the hardware requirements, that helps to know do we need to look at hardware that needs to be uh, updated or does what the hardware we have support it. And then um, looking at an evaluation, a table like this is clean, but then you're going to follow up with your overall rating. It doesn't have to be a great length. Here's just a couple of paragraphs that are just solid to let us know the overall thoughts and why you're recommending. And then I'm going to open Alexandra's because I thought it was another good example that just follows a more simple kind of outline like this. So here's computer system, hardware, objectives, and then she chose to rank it numerically, zero lowest, nine highest, and then after doing that for general characteristics, instructional quality, and so forth, was able to come up with a numerical quantitative rating overall and to support her thinking, which just helps you see why she arrived where she did, and then the overall recommendation. So that's basically what I'm asking you to do. So connection to what you've learned in Module 6, building upon that, if you have some personal experience or current something that's happening with you in your school or job that you're in, that's fine. Tie it to that. I just thought it might be uh, easier for you to go back and connect to what you've already done in Module 6. I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel, so you can just follow along with what you learned there. And then the evaluation and recommendation is, is really the meat of this assignment. If, if you want, you can do the documents like I showed you. You can put it in a spreadsheet. If you want to use a presentation tool, if you found that's a better way for you to communicate it as you did in some of the earlier assignments, you can certainly do it that way. You can present it, but just cover that core content as I showed you in the examples. And then, as always, we'll finish with the review and reflect. And as I've, I've said the last couple of weeks, just use this as an opportunity to just make connections overall. So, hey, we've, we've studied all of this so far about educational technology. Now we're looking at hardware, software evaluation, and maybe an aha moment, an epiphany, something that stood out to you this week that sort of helped you build upon what you've already learned or anything that stood out to you that you learned from others this week as well. And next week, we're going to be wrapping up your final version of your leadership development plan. Many of you have already completed the most of that when we looked at it earlier in the semester, but now that you've worked on some other assignments and you had some time to think about educational technology, you might have some tweaks and some final thoughts that you want to put into your leadership development plan. So I want you to be able to put your final thoughts together next week and then wrap that up so it won't be as heavy lifting next week. So hopefully that will give you something to look forward to. Well, thank you again so much for all of your efforts. You guys are doing great, and I look forward to seeing your work this week. Have a wonderful week. Be safe and continue to reflect and learn and grow.